If your car isn't starting and it's not cranking or it's starting intermittently, and you don't have a bad battery, there is a decent chance that you have an issue with your starter relay. The starter motor requires a ton of amps from the battery to power it to actually start the engine, and the ignition system isn't capable of delivering that amperage from the battery by itself. So what happens is the ignition switch delivers a little bit of current to the starter relay, and then the starter relay therefore then is able to send the full power of the battery to the starter motor. A relay looks something like this. They do come in different shapes, sizes, and colors of course, but it is just a small little part that's got a couple pins on it and it is plugged into the fuse box that's typically located in your engine compartment. So this little relay is responsible for sending all the power from the battery to the starter motor to allow the starter motor to start the engine. So if your car isn't cranking at all, that means that your starter motor isn't engaging and therefore there's a possible chance that this relay has failed or has gone bad and that's what's causing your vehicle to not start. So first let's go ahead and talk quickly about some of the symptoms that you'll get if you have a bad starter motor relay. The most common symptom is your car doesn't start. If your car doesn't start and it does crank, that means the starter motor is working. So if your car's not cranking at all, that means the starter motor isn't working and that's when we're gonna wanna look towards the relay. So if you are cranking, then the issue is not gonna be with this relay, it's gonna be with something else. So we're looking for a no start, no crank. Additionally, sometimes this can start to fail but not fully fail. So if you have intermittent starting issues where sometimes it doesn't crank at all and then sometimes it will crank, then this could potentially be the cause of that as well. And then the last thing is it is possible that this fails in a closed position. And in a closed position, that means all of the amperage is being sent to the starter. So it's possible that the starter motor never disengages. And if that happens, the starter motor is gonna constantly be running even after the engine starts. And so you're gonna hear either a grinding noise or like a loud kind of whirring sound coming from the starter motor. And that's a good sign that this relay is bad and it's not allowing the starter motor to disengage. So to determine if this relay is the issue, the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that we have a good fully charged battery. It needs to be fully charged and we need to make sure that it also holds a charge. Go ahead and inspect your battery. If there's any corrosion around the battery cables, go ahead and clean that up. And if you think you might have a bad battery, go ahead and test it or take it to an auto parts store and have them test it to make sure that we have a fully working and good battery. Next from there, what we're gonna to wanna to do is pull your your fuse box diagram in the owner's manual and locate the fuse box in the engine compartment. From there, what we're gonna do is locate the starter relay, and then we're also gonna look for another relay in there that looks the same as this. The majority of the relays in a fuse box are going to look the same and be the exact same part numbers, and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for another relay that looks exactly the same as this, but that controls a not-so-important feature on the car. These relays are used for a number of things like your car's horn. If you have power seats or heated seats, sometimes they're used for the windshield wipers and various other components that aren't crucial to your car engine running and starting. And so what we're gonna do is take the horn relay, for example, and we're gonna swap the horn relay with this starter relay. If your car starts now and it wasn't starting before, then that's a good indication that maybe the relay was bad. But then what you're also gonna to wanna to go ahead and do is try to push the horn to see if the horn actually works. If the horn doesn't work, then that means that this relay is bad. If the car is starting now and the horn does work, you probably don't have an issue with the starter relay, but there are also a number of other ignition related fuses that are located in that fuse box, something like the ignition switch fuse. And so it's also good to go ahead and check all of your fuses there to make sure that you don't have any issues with your ignition system. Because if the issue isn't the relay, and the starter motor's not cranking at all. It could be something else within the ignition system, like the ignition switch. 
And so you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and check all those fuses to make sure you don't have another issue within the ignition system. And then if the issue isn't the relay here, I will say it's a lot more common for a starter motor to fail than it is for the starter relay to fail. These things do fail. They just don't fail quite as frequently as the motors themselves. And so if you're getting a constant no crank situation or a very weak crank, there's a pretty good chance that you just need to replace the starter motor. But it always makes sense to go ahead and look for the relay first because this is like a $3 part and a starter motor is probably like 300. That wraps it up for this video. Hopefully this was helpful in knowing what to look for and how to test your starter relay. If you guys appreciate this video, please click the like button, subscribe to our channel, and stay tuned for all our future content.